What's poppin' people, it's Elixir here. Today we're gonna be doing something a little different from the usual content we're used to seeing on this channel. Today we're gonna be reviewing a board that I've been using for the past few months as my daily driver at this point and a keyboard commission from a friend that's built in the same board. Now that that's all said and done, get strapped in. So for those of you that haven't heard of Caps Unlocked, they're a keyboard company based here in the UK. They've been working on making cool, affordable, entry-level boards for tech enthusiasts here in Europe. Now, if you didn't know, I'm from the UK, and like most of Europe, the keyboards I grew up here have the ISO layout. For my friends overseas that might not have come across it, the ANSI layout is the most common layout in the custom market. The 2.25U enter key and left shift, as well as that 1.5U pipe on R3, we don't have that here. Until I got my first gaming laptop, every keyboard I'd ever used had the ISO layout. You'd be surprised how changing the layout of just a few keys can completely shatter your typing experience. The ISO layout uses a 1.25U left shift key to make way for that pipe key over in the bottom left. We also have another 1U key to the right of our apostrophe. Outside of some changes like shift modifiers, like speech marks and the app being swapped around, the layout is largely the same. As I said before, Anzai layout is the most common layout in the enthusiast mech market, especially if you're not planning on picking up a soldering iron. The reason for this is hot swap layouts often have their layouts preset, which limits the board's flexibility of its layout customizability. If you're just getting into this hobby, but you don't feel comfortable picking up a soldering iron to get a board that features that ISO layout, and you don't feel like dropping upwards of hundred pounds on a board that might feel alien to you after the layout changes are made, that's where Caps Unlock comes in. The CU80 and its little brother, the CU65, launched in their original run with a hot swap board that was able to support ANSI and ISO on the same PCB. While the ANSI support was dropped from the CU80 in favor of bringing RGB to the board and focusing on the core base of ISO diehards, the CU65 still remains its multi-layout PCB even into round three. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the CU80 round two that I got secondhand from the Caps Unlock Discord, talking some common issues with ISO layout and taking a look at the commission piece I did for my friend Howie in the round three group by CU80. Now for full transparency, I did receive my CU80 round three a little bit early from Caps Unlocked in order to make this review, because at the time of writing, this is the only review of the CU80 on YouTube. The CU65 does have a little bit of coverage, but the CU80's landscape is completely barren. Whilst I did get the board early, I did pay for this entirely with my own money. Well, Howie's money, but you get the gist. Also, outside of a little bit of fact checking with Caps Unlocked, you didn't get to see any part of this script before you guys did, so that won't make any effect on the video. Hey uh, guys, just Elixir from the editing room talking like post everything. Unfortunately, the early copy of the CU80 actually did kind of fall through and there were a couple of extra delays. So I wasn't actually the first person from the round three to get their hands on the board. And because of some other delays as well, this review is coming out a lot later. So a lot of the stuff that is at the time of writing isn't quite up to date anymore, but the CU80 round three has mostly gone through its group by stage, just a couple of delays for EU orders. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind for the rest of the video when I do talk about stuff that's at the time of writing because uh, this has been a lot longer project than it intended to be initially. See ya. The CU80 round three group buy ran from the 8th of February until the end of the month. With orders expecting to start shipping in July, at the time of writing, the final delay came from Caps' washer order being literally the worst thing I have ever seen. 20,000 washers in one bag. One guy to sort all that out for the orders. Make sure to head down to the comments to pay respects to Caps because he definitely took the fattest L possible on this one. Some say he's still sorting out washers to this day. If you did purchase the board during the February window, you would receive the ISO hot swap board, aluminium top case, base plate, and the foot bar. Alongside the contents of the CU80, you could also order an additional PCB, Duroc V2 stabilizers, and take your pick from a whole host of Duroc stocks or kale box red, black, blue, and white switches in packs of 100. For savvy buyers out there, the price of the Duroc V2 stabs do come to less than the average market price of the Duroc V2 stabs if you were to buy them separately. The lowest price I've seen personally while ordering from the West is $17.50 from Mechboards, which is my go-to for keyboard parts in the UK. These come included for $16.99 extra on top of the $89.99 base price. Bear in mind, for those of you that aren't crumpet launchers like yours, truly, the prices may vary due to VAT. All prices so far have been on the listed website. If you did miss the window though, extras are available for purchase through pre-order on the website. These actually ship during the same window as the group buy and for the same base price of $89.99, but no longer give you the option to add an extra PCB or buy switches or stabilizers. 
so you'll have to source those yourself. The board itself is 10 keyless, otherwise known as the 80% layout, which is where the CU80 gets its name. You'll be seeing no numpads here. The PCB from round 2 onwards is an ISO layout hotswap board with SMD RGB LEDs. These are per key and fully configurable in QMK. While you can get the board to work in VIA for layer management and sorting your macros, currently the lighting tab is disabled in VIA for this board, so if you do want to get more in depth with your lighting profiles, that'll be a job for QMK. However, this board does have more than competent onboard lighting control. After flashing to the newest firmware, which you can find in its dedicated channel by default, your lighting control will all be on the function key and the nav cluster. Speaking of firmware, the board is known to have a bug where after rebooting your PC or waking it from sleep, the board wouldn't respond until unplugged and replugged. So if your board out of the box is doing the same, make sure to go to the Caps Unlock Discord linked in the description and check the latest firmware channel to get the latest firmware, which you can flash onto your board via QMK or through VIA. The hot swap sockets on this board are KL sockets that should support any MX style switch that you're looking to use and has its, and has its USB-C port located on the back left of the board. The board supports screw and stabilizers, which is a huge plus in an entry level board under £100 and is compatible with both PCB and plate mount switches. So a whole host of flexibility here, real nice. The integrated plate design is a low profile board that features a foot bar that screws into the base plate with three M4 screws, making it a natural typing angle of 8 degrees. It is a comfortable typing experience with or without a wrist race. I currently use one of the rubber strips on my CU80 on the front base in its mount groove. But I've heard of others using the extra rubber strip along the center of the foot bar to give it a little extra grip. I didn't want to change the typing angle of my board, but as you can see, having only one rubberized point does cause the board to slide around a bit when pushed from the bottom or either side. However, this is completely a non-factor in daily typing or gaming use. The case does ship with internal foam, however, to get the best out of the board, I'm going to be using neoprene filler here as it's heavier duty filler. Unfortunately, as my personal CU80 came secondhand with pre-lubed and filmed switches, I've already lubed and filmed the majority of the switches of Howie's board and won't be able to do a stock sound test with this board. But if you do want to see stock sound tests in my future videos, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Despite what some scarce old renders on their Instagram may allude to, the CU80 at the time of writing only comes in the black aluminium color. However, there have been rumblings of e-white units as an option in the future, so if that does come to fruition, I'll be sure to let you guys know in the next one. Actually, as an edit here coming in, we do have confirmation that there will be more colors coming from round four onwards. Caps has been looking into Cerakoting, so that aforementioned e-white, you should definitely be seeing some more colors coming in future reviews, so. Make sure to hit that notification bell and we'll see you guys with that next colorful CU boards. So now that we've talked about the board, let's talk a little bit about the ISO layout and some of the problems you should expect to run into. I say problems, but really it's problem. Singular. Keycaps. Keycaps are a nightmare to source for ISO. Veterans of the enthusiast keyboard hobby will be more than familiar with the £120 base kits available from GMK and EBBT group buys that often have a turnaround time from order of purchase at your doorstep often being 12 months at best. Often this is an excellent way to make sure that the key kit you're using is getting ISO compatible and including our unique enter key as part of the base set is now becoming more common practice. Purists out there though find themselves disappointed to find that in order to fully achieve a full ISO kit coverage you may end up having to spend an extra 40 or so pounds just to get the extra keys needed to give you perfect ISO coverage. Keycap designers. Look at me. Be more like GMK British Racing Green. And include the ISO layout too, semicolon, apostrophe, and hash keys. You guys already give us two sets of nav clusters and other superfluous keys. Be kind to us that share the English alphabet with you. Please? If you're looking to get a CU80 or CU65 board, but A, don't feel like paying triple digits for a GMK or EPBT set, or B, don't feel like waiting upwards of a year just to get keycaps to be able to use your keyboard, that does mean you're gonna be having to look elsewhere, either for temporary keycaps or even just a set you're happy with. This may naturally lead you to online retailers such as Amazon or eBay, but you'll be remiss to find that majority of sub 40 keycap sets are 60% ANSI layouts, or even kits such as one I currently have on my board here from Glinging, that cover a full board with some extras can offer you near full ISO compatibility, but ISO variants of keys aren't available. The obvious bugbear as well is that the enter key, arguably the most important key of them all, is absent from most of these kits. The enter key that I have on this board is $2.50 from WASD Keyboards, and whilst it's a little taller than the Cherry Profile, it beats the short stack paw print enter key I got from AliExpress to solve my enter key problem. Like, look at this. Why did anyone think this was okay? Wanna know what else isn't okay? The price of this enter key, 
The key itself, I said, was 250. You know what the shipping was? 1750. 17 and a half dollars to ship one piece of plastic. A single enter key. It's absolutely ridiculous. And while the AliExpress key was around seven quid after shipping, which was a bit uncomfortable, its height makes it not even usable as a compromise. So Howie and I bit the bullet and got our enter keys in the same shipment and split the cost. So the grand total of a singular key cost me $10.64, or £7.50 at the time of conversion. So you might consider dropping a little extra coin on something a bit more bespoke from a place like Etsy. You could get a nicer design, potentially more compatibility, and not have to wait ridiculous wait times. This next PSA applies to even those that aren't looking for the needle in a haystack of an ISO compatible board. To my friends across the pond, pay attention. If you find a keycap set that you like on Etsy, it pays to do a little extra research before hitting that buy button. Some designs are clones of GMK or EPBT sets, mass produced often as PBT keycaps and sold on Chinese online retailers like Taobao, Banggood and AliExpress. Now some people aren't a fan of clones, but if you're fine with them, especially for sets that have long since been out of production, be my guest. Especially for sets that have long since gone out of production, or maybe you just prefer the feel of PBT and the design was only on that ABS GMK design, you do you. You should take your search into places like AliExpress and see if the same keycap set shows up there. Sets like this Animal Crossing set using a pseudo XDA profile are a clone of Infinikey's PBT Islander, which in itself is derivative of the Animal Crossing Special Edition Nintendo Switch. I first found this set on Etsy for about £80 and was genuinely considering picking it up. Months later I found the same set of multiple listings as low as £21. And it's not just sets like this. Multiple sets from Etsy I've saved in my list of keycap sets to build with, I've since found after doing some digging around these Chinese retailers at sometimes a quarter of the price. Sure, the wait time might be a bit longer than Etsy, but is it £40 more expensive shipping? Probably not. So we've talked about my board for a bit, but let's talk about the real star of the show here. This Evangelion 01 themed board I built for Dante Demon Z. Since this board supports screw and stabilizers, we had a couple of good options. Originally, we were looking at Duroc V2 stamps, but for a little extra, I was able to find some purple and green screw and stabilizers from Equals that we've lived with Crytox 205 Grade 0 and performed the Holy Mod on. It's my first time doing the mod, so I'm not sure I did it incredibly well, but I did use leftovers of key films to perform the mod, like originally done, rather than cutting a plaster or band aid, so hopefully, any of the mush from me messing up should be minimized. Joining these purple and green keycaps are the Shogoki switches. I got these well after the group buy from them being on stock on Prototype, which is actually where I got the Crytox 205 Grade Zero to lube these switches. It was my first time lubing and with the amount of free lube I got, it was definitely an exercise in less is more. I originally planned to lube this with Tribosis 3205 as it's a thinner lube that's better suited to tactiles. And it's a bit thinner, so it's easier for a first time lube job like this. Unfortunately, my order of Tribosis is being held hostage by the GMK Civilizations order I made back in March, so that won't be here until December. I did have to buy additional Crytox to finish this build though, as I was hard pressed to lube 70 Shogogi switches with the free lube that was shipped with, and 20 or so Duroc T1 67 teal switches that we use for the F keys and nav cluster. Not to mention the stabilizers. Can't skimp out on those. We went with the T1s as they seemed to be the closest feel to the Shogokis which were the main feel of the board. Harry originally was looking at the Serico Silent Lunia switches by Zambumon originally, but that run unfortunately had long since finished. We did actually look at the Jurok Pom that the original switch was a recolor of as an alternative silent switch, so a quiet keyboard was more important than the feel. Tactile just seemed like the ideal choice, and with the Serico's off the table, we started looking at other Jurok switches. It was actually by chance I found the Shogokis on Prototypus, which was actually the spark for starting this whole project. I lubed most of these off camera, but I did save one of each switch, lubed versus unlubed for comparison. I actually had my chat, who's mostly full of keyboard novices or people outside the enthusiast market, try and guess which one was the lubed versus unlubed switch. So if you want to be a part of that, you can come and catch me over for these live shenanigans at twitch.tv slash Elixir.
I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but with our board bustling with purple and green, all we had to do now was get some keycaps to finish this off. As you may have guessed from what I said earlier, the set we got required us to make do without our special enter key. So we went with a deep purple colored enter key and we matched it with a PBT AVA 01 themed keycap set that I actually found from an eBay seller as it shaved about 20 pounds off the Etsy listing that I originally found. All in all, I'm really happy with this build. It's the first board I've actually got to build for someone and a board that I got to build from scratch. I'm really happy with how we managed to fit the theme so consistently across the board. I probably won't be doing my next keyboard review until about March when the final set of keycaps arrive for the upcoming keyboard project. So make sure to hit that like button to push this out to our YouTube overlords and make sure a fresh set of eyeballs can find this one in the meantime. Thank you to Howie for commissioning me for this build project. Thank you to Caps Unlocks for sending this board out early and catering to us ISO diehards that are sorely underrepresented in this market. And to all of you that made it to the end of the video, thank you. This has been a long time in the making and a very stressful project to get finished. I have been Elixir. This has been my CU80 review. And until next time, have yourselves a damn good one.